something different for you today. Hope you like it. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. And this is Daily Shot of Pirates coming to you from Detroit. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. The Pirates and Tigers were rained out here last night. That game will be made up as part of a double header today at Comerica Park. That begins at 12.40 p.m. It's going to be a true doubleheader, old school doubleheader, nine-inning ball. And the pitchers will remain, as had been planned for this series, Jared Jones in game one, Paul Skeens in game two. A fun thing unto itself. I had the opportunity yesterday before what was supposed to be game one, just the general availability, about an hour and change uh, in the Pirates clubhouse, in the Pirates dugout, to just talk, you know, to just converse loosely with Skeens. It feels like ever since we had one such talk back in the spring, this was in Sarasota, Florida, after one of his outings, that every time he became available, and this is not even remotely a criticism of him, this is just what the demand is on him, that there was this crush of humanity surrounding him. Cameras and microphones everywhere, people I didn't recognize at all. So what I would do is I would just kind of bide my time and say, listen, eventually this is going to subside into something that resembles normalcy, and and here we are. This extremely early stage of his big league career. He's already had his first start at home, his first start on the road, his first time he struck out the first seven batters he faced as he did to the Cubs. And for sure, there will be other firsts along the way. But a lot of that stuff has kind of gotten checked off over the past couple weeks. And here he was yesterday before the game, just kind of chilling, and I wanted to share some of these observations with you because all you see of him is you know him going to the mound and this larger than life physically and otherwise figure, and you're getting all stoked for all the strikeouts, and you're putting in your head all kinds of comparison points to truly great pitchers from the past, and he's also you know just a kid. And yet he isn't. When he came out from the dugout tunnel into the dugout to prepare for, loosely can be described as warm-ups, for the guy who's pitching the next day, they're not really anything. You're just looking for ways to creatively kill the clock. And he came out and he notices a group of the Latin American guys having their own conversation. Uh, O'Neill Cruz is there, Edward Olivares. Jose Hernandez, uh, Mendy Lopez, the coach and former infielder for the Pirates, is kind of the ringleader in the moment. And Skeens just kind of walks through there with them and gives each of them a fist bump. He knows that not all of them have the greatest grasp of English, and he told me himself he doesn't have that much of a grasp of Spanish, though he'd like to learn it. But he still finds his way through there and bump, 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 bump down the line. And they all kind of smile back and bump back and whatever. And this is not something that I've seen in this is my now 20th year of covering Major League Baseball a lot from rookies. They'll stay with their own. They'll respect the space that the Latin American players have and Maybe tiptoe in that direction when it's time. That's not what Skeens did. That's not what I saw. He just walked right through there. They're his teammates. He's their teammate. And I asked him about that. And I asked him if there was any kind of trepidation. He said, no, if anything, he felt guilty that he hasn't yet learned the Spanish that he wants to and that he feels that he needs to to be the best possible teammate. Pittsburgh, that's who you're getting. Okay, (laughs) you got to understand here, it's not just about hitting 102 on the gun. You're getting somebody whose persona, whose character was such that 
he's continuing to be praised by military leaders from his time at the Air Force Academy. That's him. But continuing this, because he and I are now talking on this end of the dugout, and by that I mean I have a picture in my head here, but it, it's on the manager's side as opposed to the far side where the Latin American guys were. And Grant Cook comes up the steps. Now, who's Grant Cook, you ask? Well, he's going to be the catcher in game two today. He's a 27-year-old journeyman who's never been in the bigs. This is his moment. I don't know if it's his Drew Maggi moment. I mean, Maggi came up a lot later in life than 27 years old, but you never know when you're going to get a chance or when the chance has already passed you. So the Pirates are short on catchers. They don't want to bring up Henry Davis before he's ready. And Cook is here. And Cook has caught Skeens. And Skeens praised him up, down, and sideways in terms of his receiving ability, in terms of his game-calling ability. And he said, Skeens said, about Cook getting his chance, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. And from there, and for a while, it was pretty much what he wanted to talk about, was Grant Cook. And in general, in general, he's laid back in a way that doesn't show when he's on the mound. And he's intense on the mound in a way that doesn't show when he's not on the mound. And yet, when you're around him, there's enough of that confidence that exudes from him just naturally that you can see where the bridge is. You can see how one contributes to the other in both directions and how both of those are going to help him become everything that he can be. One thing that I, I did ask him with the recorder on was if, if he felt that things were just beginning to get normal in his baseball world now. Yeah, no, I mean, really, the, the only thing that's new, I think, is traveling to these new places. Um, the, the game doesn't change. It's just us as, as players, whether we change it ourselves. So um, it's just baseball. It could be a lot worse. We could be doing, doing worse things. Yeah, yeah. Ordinary stuff there, right? Yep. That is an extraordinary individual. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Mike, who says, DK, I know you probably get sick of the Bob Nutting questions, but this one bugs me. Does he know that basically the whole fan base hates him? And if not, how can he not know? If he knows, does he just not care or does he think everyone else is wrong? Now, I generally don't care what people think about me, but that's small scale. If thousands of people felt that way, I might have to start asking some me questions. Mike, the narrative regarding nutting or the narratives regarding nutting are so far escaped from whatever anyone could conceivably refer to as reality that there's never going to be any corralling them. There's never going to be any correcting the stuff that's wrong, uh, amending the stuff that's incomplete, nothing, zero. And I think that both Bob and the people who are near him came to accept that a long time ago. The most common question that I get related to nutting is, does he even go to the games? And when I come back with, well, yeah, he's at almost all of them that I can see at home. He'll make some road trips. 
okay, well, then he doesn't show his face. He doesn't. Uh, well, yeah, actually, he does. He's right down there by the dugout. He's against the railing. He's talking to fans. He's talking to the players. He's talking to manager, coaches, GM, whoever. He's right there. He's right there. And you can tell, I can tell whenever I say stuff like this, that the initial response is negative because, well, that's not what I came to believe. And I really hate the guy. So tell me something else that makes me continue hating the guy. Oh, well, so then they'll come. Okay. Well, he, he's really cheap. And I go, yeah, he's really cheap. He is. That part's true. He doesn't spend what he should on payroll. Yes, that's also true. He doesn't hire the greatest people. Well, that one's very true. It doesn't get brought up often enough, in my estimation. Probably his greatest failing as a sports owner. But all of those things never seem to be enough. Everybody wants him to be, you know, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons plus a combination therein of Howard Hughes where he's a recluse living in his mansion, the evil thunderstruck hills of West Virginia. None of, none of that applies. Or that he oversees every little move made on the roster every time a relief pitcher is signed or released. It has nuttings, prints all over it. And it's just not the case. He's actually grossly guilty, in my estimation, of over-delegating. He trusts his people way too much. So to try to answer your question, Mike, what he knows to be true is what the reality is. He knows he's not evil. He actually happens to be a pretty good guy. When you talk to people who know him, they might not like the way he runs his businesses, but they'll always say, kind of out of the side of their mouth, yeah, I mean, good guy, you know, done some nice things, showed a really personal touch in certain situations. Those Pirates Charities initiatives that you see him involved in, that's not PR. That's not him doing it for the sake of, you know, looking good on camera for two and a half seconds as part of a commercial. Those are his babies. He loves and lives for that stuff. Ask anyone who knows him, who actually knows him. So he's comfortable with who he is. I think that's the best way to answer your question. Is he oblivious to how people feel about his cheapness with the pirates? No, he's not in any way. But he also happens to believe that he's running the business properly and he believes that by running it the way that he runs it, there's never any danger, as there was when his father and then ultimately him took over of the team leaving Pittsburgh. Because if you look around the world of sports, and there's a point to be had here. The only teams that ever leave are the ones that are failing financially in their existing market. The Pirates are most definitely not failing financially in Pittsburgh. So go ahead and have at it. He's not going to push back. The people around him aren't going to push back. They know that that's too far gone, and they're right. When someone asks me a question, I'll answer with what the reality is, regardless of what kind of reaction I get to that. I don't care either. He's not a good sports owner. He's too cheap. He over-delegates. But Mr. Burns and Howard Hughes and everything else that you want to have attached to this, uh-uh. It just doesn't exist. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow, talking about the doubleheader today here in Detroit. Thanks so much for listening. 